Singularity came out in 2010 and actually received some pretty good ratings, but for some reason it seems like nobody played it. The game isn't talked about almost at all nowadays, but a lot of people on Steam will actually tell you the same thing I'm going to tell you. This game is a hidden gem. And that's coming from someone who has only played the game for the first time a couple years back, so I'm not biased. Comparisons to Bioshock can be made, but I want to make it clear that Singularity is by no means a ripoff, even if it came out three years later. It's just a general atmosphere and maybe the use of different physical enhancements that is really similar and reminds me of Bioshock, which is a positive thing, since the first Bioshock is one of my all-time favorite games. That being said, I really enjoyed Singularity and I'm going to show you why maybe you should consider playing it as well. Let's start off with the story. If you want to avoid spoilers, skip to the next timestamp in the video. The game is set in an alternate universe in which, after World War II, the Soviet Union discovered an energy source called E-99, which can be compared to uranium. Seeking world domination, Stalin orders a scientist by the name of Viktor Beresov to conduct research on the newly found material. An island research station named Katorga-12 is established and Beresov is pressured into doing field experiments, which goes horribly wrong and leaves no survivors. Fast forward to 2010, a US spy satellite is blinded by a radiation surge and the Pentagon orders a recon mission over Katorga-12. You take on the role of Ranko, one of two Spartan team soldiers heading to Katorga 12 in a helicopter to start their mission when you are met with an EMP explosion and your chopper crashes, cutting you off from Captain Devlin. Stranded at Katorga 12's docks alone, you make your way to the research facility in order to regroup with Devlin and be evacuated. While exploring, a huge explosion goes off warping time and putting you in the midst of past events at Katorga 12. Suddenly, the whole building is on fire but you manage to save an injured man from death and get him and yourself to safety before time warps again and you're back in the present. But something's different. The environment has changed, most notably the statue in the main hall. It doesn't depict Stalin anymore, but a man named Nikolai Demichev, the person you just saved from the fire. You get back on track to regroup with Devlin when you have your first encounter with one of the E-99 mutants attacking you. Not a good sign. There are more where this creature came from and they will cross your path. You finally find Devlin and help him take out more mutants. At this point, contact with the headquarters is shut down, so your best bet is to stay teamed up and fight your way through the facility together and hope for the rescue team to arrive. But you are soon to realize that the mutants aren't the only ones out for you, as some kind of Russian troops arrive in the facility and try to take you out. You manage to hold position against them for some time, but ultimately are overwhelmed by their numbers and have to flee. Unfortunately, you and Devlin get captured by the troops and meet the main man himself, Demichev. He starts interrogating you, but Devlin doesn't want to cooperate or provide information and is shot in the process. Demichev starts talking about some device named TMD and demands you handing it over, when he and his troops are ambushed by someone unknown. Using the moment of surprise, Ranko slips away and runs for his life. He is greeted by a woman named Catherine, who hands him a gun and helps him escape. She reveals to him that she belongs to an organization called Mir-12. Mir-12 seeks to reveal the truth about Katorga-12 and E-99 to the world. Apparently, the island holds a structure called the Singularity and only Ranko can lead them there. His name is marked down in a notebook they found, stating that he will be the one to stop all this. That's why their mission is to help him. Ranko goes on, making his way through an underground complex in order to find the before-mentioned TMD. TMD stands for Time Manipulation Device and can, as the name suggests, manipulate the time state of objects. In other words, revert items to an earlier state of existence. With the help of the TMD, Ranko makes his way to the researcher Barisov and helps him escape to his lab. As it turns out, Barisov has also teamed up with Catherine and Mir-12 and his goal is to revert the tragic events leading to the E-99 catastrophe using the TMD. He is also certain that only you can help them achieve this goal. Barisov Barisov goes on to explain the history of Demichev and the horrors he's caused and Ranko goes on to do some missions for him. By using the powers of TMD, Barisov, Catherine and Ranko are able to push forward and advance through the different sections of Katorga 12. While recovering an E-99 bomb from a sinking ship, Ranko barely makes it out alive and is told by Barisov that, unfortunately, Catherine was shot and didn't make it. As to not let her death be worthless, they have to keep going and charge the E-99 bomb that Ranko has retrieved. Ranko finally reaches the reactor which he uses to charge up the bomb. He has to head to the Singularity, open up a time rift to travel back to 1955 and change the timeline by destroying the reactor of the Singularity and prevent all events that led to Demichev's rise to power. This is exactly what Renko does, but as it turns out, the plan wasn't entirely thought through. When you are met by Demichev holding Barisov at gunpoint, explaining to you that simply destroying the Singularity wasn't enough to change the outcome of the events, as all he had to do was rebuild it. Barisov finally figures out what they were missing in their plan. In order to truly rewrite history, Renko has to kill himself. He is the source of all the events that led to mass destruction. You are the anomaly that changed the timeline when you went back in time and saved Demichev from the fire in the beginning. You actually received a warning in the very first chapter of the game not to save Demichev by yourself. This is where you have to make a choice. You can either go back in time and kill yourself
himself in order to revert Demichev's actions, leaving Katorga 12 to Beresov, kill Beresov right there and team up with Demichev to seek world domination, or kill both of them and cover up anything that has happened at Katorga 12 and go into hiding. Of course, the outcome of each choice is very different, but no matter which ending you get, it is revealed that Catherine actually survived back on the ship and marks down your name in the notebook that Mia 12 is to find. So we can only assume that in the end, history will repeat itself. The endings are pretty abstract and fall prey to some logical flaws, but I guess it's better to not overanalyze them and just take them for what they're meant to be as not to spoil the story. You can tell me what you think about them down in the comments and I would be happy to have a discussion with you guys. But enough about the game story for now, so let's talk about the gameplay. As I said, the gameplay is a lot like Bioshock. You pick up a variety of weapons and enhancements for your TMD, both of which you can upgrade at dedicated stations by either using weapon parts or E99 tech that lies scattered around the game world. The more you pick up, the more powerful you will be. As for weapon variety, you have your standard assault rifle, revolver, shotgun and sniper rifle, but also some special weapons that, for example, shoot explosives or allow you to control the bullets you fire in slow motion. Physical enhancements include a higher carrying capacity for health packs or ammo, increased stamina or weapon accuracy and more. The weapons control pretty well, even though they lack a little bit of punch compared to Bioshock. But the large variety kinda makes up for that. Your TMD allows you to pulverize or slow down certain enemies if you have stocked up on enough energy cells, which normally wasn't a problem. There is also quite some variety in enemy types and combat situations, including different kinds of mutants and also some stealth segments. Pacing is pretty good and you never get bored, because the game frequently switches from firefights against mutants, soldiers, to some boss fights and sneaking around. Lower-wise, there are projectors and tapes that you can watch or listen to for a more in-depth view on the history of Katorga 12 and its events. The only thing that I didn't like here is that, opposed to Bioshock, you cannot listen to the tapes while moving forward, which forces you to stand still for a couple of seconds or minutes if you want to listen to the whole thing. While exploring and moving through the different facilities, there are also flashbacks that offer some insight into past events that happened at Katorga 12, which is pretty cool and feels more natural than standing still and listening to a tape. As for the navigation, you have to know that I'm one of those people who always needs to explore every little corner of a level before I proceed with the main mission and in this game I sometimes missed secrets because it wasn't clear which way to go and once an area is locked off you can't go back because the game functions only with checkpoints. But to the game's defense, I often forgot to use the game's built-in navigation system that shows you the main mission's way until it was too late. There were also some cool little puzzle segments where you had to use your TMD to open certain sections of the map or where you had to pick up oxygen tanks for your gas mask in order to not suffocate from toxic gas. As for the graphics, the game holds up pretty well and runs smoothly on Windows 11. I used widescreen fixer to increase the FOV though, since the game doesn't feature a built-in slider and I would recommend you do the same if you want to see your surroundings. Otherwise, you will have a very limited view that you probably remember from Xbox 360 or PS3 games. You can get Singularity on Steam for around 20 bucks, I guess sometimes even less on a sale, and if you want a fun, old-school, creepy FPS experience for around 8 hours, you should definitely consider checking it out sometime. So here we are, at the end of our revisiting of Singularity, and I hope you learned something about this game. Please tell me if you've ever played it yourself down in the comments and tell me what you liked most about it. If not, maybe this video piqued your interest and you will check it out for yourself. Either way, I hope you enjoyed my revisiting and if you want to see more, it would mean a lot to me if you left a like and a sub. Have a great day and I hope to see you again for my next chaotic good video.